Did you sleep down here all night? Dad, are you okay? Welcome to They Said We Said. This is John giving you my weekly spoiler review of season episode four. This one's for service. So first off the bat, I just uh, hope you enjoyed the uh, little video I put together for you guys. Um, I'm looking kind of crazy right now. Um, I just suffered from some food poisoning and actually had the most violent uh, throwing up spell ever, uh, so much that I get these cool walkers out. It's gonna be nothing but good, because it fits right into the, uh, show. My kids be, uh, a cinematographer. If you enjoyed the intro at the beginning, it was a lot of fun to make. So, let's dive into the episode. So, first off, uh, no Tyler this week, just, just myself reviewing. So, uh, this one's directed by... David Boyd, he's done a, a bunch of other episodes as well as uh, directed like shows like Friday Night Lights, uh, the TV show, which is one of my all-time favorite TV shows. If you haven't checked that out, you could uh, watch that on Netflix. I believe it's five season, four or five seasons. It's incredible. Um, my wife and I watch the whole series probably once a year. So uh, yeah, go ahead and check that out on Netflix. Uh, David Boyd's also... Uh, directed some episodes of Firefly as well, which is a, again another phenomenal, iconic series that I, that I watched. You know, check Firefly Serenity out if, if you haven't. So diving into this episode, up with Michonne and Rick in bed. So they're kind of I don't know if I'm reading too much into this, but their body language uh, kind of says it all. They're kind of completely on opposite ends of the bed. You know, not facing each other a lot. You know, stark contrast to where we saw them before when they were laying next to each other when you know they're they're cuddling and she's feeding him an apple in the morning well all the, you know the good days are gone and rightfully so so she kind of gets up i think she thinks she's sneaking out i don't know if she's aware you know knew that he, i don't know if she knew that rick was awake and saw her walk out but she uh you know grabbed she seemed to have been hiding a sniper rifle uh in the fireplace and then so she goes, you know, and she is essentially doing target practice from this abandoned car. And wow, I, I had no idea that Michonne was such a horrible shot. Like she is the like master blaster samurai with that katana, but she cannot hit a walker like five feet in front of her with a sniper rifle. Like it's bad. Like apparently she didn't have Doug Hunt when she was younger. Then we have the the scene from, I guess it was the teaser trailer with um, Rosita and Spencer kind of pulling up to Eugene. Eugene's working on some kind of radio device, uh, trying to make it, you know, pleasant for the, the for the saviors coming. Uh, they know that they're coming. They don't know when, I guess, um, but, you know, they know that they're on their way. Um, and so they start going out, but, you know, they don't make it to the gate until, you know, you hear, little pig, little pig, let me come in, you know. Uh, and then, you know, they show up early, the saviors, Negan's there, uh, Spencer's the one, Spencer's dumbass is the one that opens up the gate, and he's like, who are you? And that, that, that part was hilarious. Uh, some things from the comic right there, you know, I won't spoil anything, should or could have been, uh, happening at that time, but whatever, it, it was still a really funny, uh, back and forth between Spencer's, like, useless ass and, and Negan. So Negan comes to town, they open the gate, they see... You know, just how many saviors are with them. You know, Daryl's right there. He's one of the first people that they... Rick goes and tries to talk to Daryl. Negan warns him, you know, very quickly saying, you know, stay away from him. Um, don't talk to him. Nothing. Just, uh, you know, he's not yours anymore. But then Rosita and Spencer are trying to go along on their journey to where, wherever they were going. Uh, that's when Dwight comes by. And last week, uh, like I was talking with Tyler on the review last week is, um, you know, I felt that Dwight was kind of a sympathetic character because he's seen how much he's gone through. Now he's just, like, complete heel. Like, I feel like this is one of the biggest problems I've had with this episode uh, amongst many. 
uh, with this particular episode where it built Dwight up um, so far, especially last episode uh, in the cell, uh, that he was still a, a sympathetic character. Like, he still, he was a dick and he was a jerk off, but you knew kind of what he was going through. It, he's just kind of like, Dwight to me is just the finished product, the finished Negan breaking product. Like, he is the he is the person that's that's gone through all the stuff that Daryl's gone through and but he's he's broken and he's completely bought in. But in this one he just like goes the extra mile to just be nasty, especially with Rosita and and Spencer, but who cares about Spencer? Um but yeah, just like pouring out their water and, and just just being a, a total douchebag. So any sympathy the show wanted us, the viewers, to build up towards this character of Dwight. I feel like this episode just completely, you know, pulled it down. So then Rosita and Spencer proceed to where uh, Daryl's bike is hidden. Um, so I guess Rosita knew that some of the dead saviors were there because that's where uh, they they killed Denise. And so she, you know, she she single handedly takes out like five walkers. No help to Spencer. He's just like in the background, like Rosita, like alerting people. Like he is just one of the most worthless characters. He's like the new Nick. Um, I think his name was Nick, the guy that was, or Nicholas, he's the new Nicholas, the guy from, uh, that shot himself on the dumpster episode last season, um, that's who Spencer is now, he's just a complete throwaway, just asshole, um, and so, you know, she, she goes and she kills the, the walker saviors around, finds a gun, you know, pockets it, they bring the, um, motorcycle back, Daryl's motorcycle back to Dwight. And then the rest of the episode, you know, like, Negan, it's kind of interesting, Negan's making uh, Rick hold Lucille, uh, just kind of taunting him again, it's like with the whole hatchet and the RV from episode one of the season, um, and so they're going around, and, you know, Negan tells him, you know, we don't need your food this time, we can see that you actually don't have food, and that was the whole reason why Nick's group reached out to the hilltop in the first place, is because, yes, uh, Rick's group, that you know, the, the survivors have supplies in Alexandria, they just don't have the food source, um, so even Negan sees that, he's just like, you know, what good are you guys to me if you're starving to death, so keep your little bit of, you know, ramen noodles and, you know, Campbell's soup, but give me all the other shit. So he, he goes, uh, takes all their beds, uh, and then, then the guns. So then, you know, there's this whole long drawn out thing about with the guns, with the guns, you know, he goes to the, the cash where, um, Olivia is, is doing all the bookkeeping on these guns, you know, and two are missing, womp, 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 you know, da, da, da. Um, so then it's a big thing, it's like, I, I never felt that Olivia was really in danger, and act, and it goes even more so to spell out, um, how Negan is, you know, he doesn't take pride in killing women, he will do it, uh, that's from the comic as well, like, he will do it, but he doesn't take, he, he doesn't enjoy it as much as, he'll kill a man like that, or, you know, Anna Walker even faster, um, so he has no like, you know, tied to humanity that way. He has no remorse for killing a human person, but he he doesn't really like killing a female. Um, but he was very, you know, I guess he was very close, or so it would seem that he was very close to to killing Olivia for, for doing the, the bookkeeping wrong. But that part to me just, you know, to be honest, just really, really dragged on, dragged on. It's just like I wanted a little bit more character development, maybe more reaction like we had in the church where, you know, Rick is really talking to the Alexandrians and telling them, you know, I'm not in charge anymore, Negan's in charge, maybe if they they drawn that scene out a little more, or, you know, I don't know, it, it was just, it was all about the stupid guns, and I get it, it was important, it was like a big trust building issue, um, but it just went on too long for me. Also, smartly, you know, for once, Father Gabriel does a little switcheroo with Maggie, so, you know, Maggie, he makes it seem that Maggie did, in fact, you know, pass because of the illness or whatever, um, and so, you know, so she's hidden, you know, she's at the hilltop with Sasha, um, and Jesus and all them, but, uh, it was, it was a smart move, actually, by, uh, Father Gabriel, and, it, and it was really funny, like, the way that 
Negan reacted to Father Gabriel for seeing him. Like, he just was all creeped out that there was, like, a little smiling, happy priest <laughs> behind him. Um, and that part, that part was actually pretty funny. Rick finds... Rick goes into his house. He, he's actually stored two guns, even though he figures out later that it was, you know, Spencer that was the one that, that hid the guns. Um, so Rick goes in his own personal cache, you know, takes two guns, hands them over to Negan, and, and there you go. Um, and then, you know, Michonne comes back at the end um, of the visit from Negan, and um, he gives, so she has that, that unregistered, I guess you could say, uh, sniper rifle. And so Rick does like a step further and takes that one, even though Negan had no idea that was on the books, you know, takes that, uh, takes Michonne's sniper rifle, gives it to Negan, and, um, you know, pisses Michonne off, you know, of course, but, um, it just kind of, uh, just to build up the trust, I, I got it, you know, I got why he did it, and, you know, Negan leaves, no one died, um, you know, I, I figured, I, I don't know, I, I didn't think, I thought maybe, you know, Spencer might, might get it, or, um, Aaron or Aaron's boyfriend might get it or something because it just looked like in the church like they were it made them seem like they knew something more than they did like with the guns or something and I don't know I, I felt like maybe a minor like maybe D-list uh, character might get you know Lucille this episode you know maybe have Rick do the Lucilling um, if that's a verb um, this episode but no you know everyone's fine uh, Rick asks if Daryl could stay um, I assume Negan wanted Daryl to say, I am Negan, for him to stay. I don't know, but he didn't wind up staying. Negan wound up taking him, so that was that. You know, towards the end of the episode, that's when probably my, again, the, the speeches at the end of these episodes are trending to be my favorite parts of these episodes. Like the speech with, or just the back and forth with Carol and Ezekiel in episode two, um, or that scene in the last episode with Negan, Daryl, and Dwight, um, and they're all, you know, they're all talking. It, it, these little speech scenes seem to be more impactful than, than most, of uh, than, than a lot of the other, like, just random walker killing or whatever, or just, you know, the, the bullying. So my favorite back and forth in this episode is the back and forth between you know, Rick reveals to Michonne about Shane. You know, he, he brings up Shane. This is the first time we've heard about Shane in a while. Tells him that he knows that Judith is not his, but he will, you know, he's going to be there to raise her and protect her uh, and all that. And, that, you know, that was, that was a great scene. The back and forth between Spencer and Rick before that was awesome. Uh, you know, he, he even gets a little Negan on him, and he's just like, do you understand? You better say yes. And he makes uh, Spencer say yes. Uh, before he got his teeth knocked in, so that that was pretty good. He's just like, yeah, I'm not I'm not the man anymore, but I'm still the man when Negan's not around. So you you do have someone to answer to. Basically, ends on two uh, small scenes, which were they're a little jarring. Uh, goes back to Michonne. She goes back on top of the car. She's looking for walkers to kill. She doesn't have a, her rifle anymore, uh, but she still does have her katana. And guessing she's just gonna, you know, wipe out random walkers in this field with a katana um and then you know she sees smoke in, in the in the distance she walks over sees all the mattresses that were you know all the beds that were taken from alexandria by the saviors are all just like stacked up and burned just saying that yeah we didn't need them but you guys aren't going to sleep well either so that that was a pretty dick move that it was a pretty good scene though the the real ending ending it feels like there's a lot of endings of this episode was um rosita knocks on the door to eugene says i need you to make me a bullet because she still has a gun from that um dead savior that was walking around um and so and so that was it so it, it just seemed a little tacked on and, and a little even cheesy to me that last that last scene um even the acting was just like just weird and off and it's just like what are you gonna do you know, have Eugene make you a uh, crap ton of bullets for your one little gun, and that's going to take on the saviors, or, I, I don't know, it just, it just seemed really, really bizarre. So, as far as scoring this one, guys, this was probably, actually, this is not probably, this episode was my least favorite episode of the season. I'm going to rate this one pretty low at, like, a 
eight out of five missing gun. It was a 90 minute episode, which it didn't feel like it needed to be. It was just a lot of Negan bullying. Um, he had some good one-liners, you know, especially his parting remark. That one's even a little too graphic, you know, something shoving down something and thanking him for it. Uh, you get the gist, uh, you know, that was, it was a good line. Um, but as a whole, just the, the episode didn't need to be 90 minutes long. And I'm, I'm, I don't tend to be a Debbie Downer on these um, reviews because I tend to like this show quite a bit, and, I, and I, I think I stick up for it quite a bit. But this one just seemed, uh, it just seemed, it just dragged and, and just not a lot of stuff. And it's just like, it's you know, oh, a town being bullied by a, a bully. We don't have that in politics, right? Maybe it was just, like, too soon or something. Like, let's give it some time before we make any of those kind of comparisons. So that's it for the episode, you guys. Um, uh, did you guys like it? Did you not like it? Do you agree with me? Um, comment below. Um, you know, click on our floaty heads to subscribe to the channel. Um, and comment, and let's talk about it. So for John, for They Said, We Said, let's sign off.